when I compare to like Harry Potter or something, they never really negotiate or like, not negotiate, but they never really talk in those in a lot of books like that, like the that the place that they are at that is seen as like a safe place or a good place also has problems within it. Like they never talk about how absolutely fucking absurd it is that if you are in Slytherin, you are automatically labeled as a villain to the point yeah. that they are sent away during the last battle and they don't even get to try to help to save their, their school and their friends and all this kind of stuff. It's just such a simplistic asshole fascist way of doing it. And like, you're, you're not supposed to question that when you're reading those books, it's very obvious that you're not supposed to right yeah. but everybody does <laughs> like literally everyone does and they're like you're like objectively like frustrated reading those books that you can see clear issues with like how dumbledore runs things how the teachers run things and all that but they never like they never talk about it so you as an audience feel like you're you're like it's a weird disconnect of feeling like I see problems in this world, but nobody in the world is talking about it. Why wouldn't they talk about it? It just, it takes you out of the story and it makes you like, it just makes you like break the fourth wall basically of this world because the world is in question in itself when they should be. And I love these books because they do, because like from this book on like camp is messed up and mm -hmm. you're supposed, and there's no way that you shouldn't be upset reading this stuff. You're upset seeing like how easy it was for for Chiron to get kicked out of his job and for all of them to be abandoned. See how Tyson's being treated by camp and then by extension how Percy is being treated by camp. Um, you're supposed to like look at that and be like, what is wrong with camp? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, to go back to Harry Potter though, the movie version is they lock up all the Slytherins. The yeah. book version was, I think McGonagall says, you guys have a choice to make, knowing that she's sending the Slytherins in to fight their own parents for the most part. And um, so I don't know if that's better. That off. alone, why are all the Death Eaters only from Slytherin? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry to tell like JK Rowling, but when I read Harry Potter and I didn't realize how bad it was, the house that always makes the most sense for, for me personally is Ravenclaw because people like that can also end up becoming fascinated with like fascist ideas. It's yeah, it's just absurd that there's just like this presumption that if you're in Slytherin, then you have to be bad or somebody in your family has to be bad. And it, like Gryffindor can have really bad people too. Like if you're caught up on like being the hero, Mm -hmm. You can be so obsessed with that that you end up becoming doing like horrible monstrous things because it gives you attention. Like what's his face? Uh, Gilderoy Lockhart. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he a, like a Gryffindor person? No, he's know. actually a Ravenclaw, I believe. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. that like makes my point. But it's just it's such like simplistic thinking that mm -hmm. literally all bad people could only come from one place because that's the only place that the bad people. <laughs> like if all the bad people at camp or something are all from Aries like yeah. Aries cabin or something like no the like the literal demon child is from Hermes yeah like Luke is from Hermes cabin the one that like adopts all of the kids that never get claimed like mm -hmm. they're like the they're like the people they're like the ambassadors of the camp where they're like go around and teach everybody how to do things and they're the ones that always have kids with them sometimes for years and years and years on end that never get claimed and that's that's the people that end up having like the horrible villain mm -hmm. not like not a cabin that you would maybe expect it to be like clarice even in this book like clarice is mad because because she doesn't want to be like owned up by by percy of all people after what happened with aries yeah but she still is like upset she's like we have to protect the camp i don't want to I don't want to do this like I want to protect the camp like why are you why are you telling me that we can't like I don't want to even when she's yelling at Percy she stops and be, when they tell her like some of your siblings are hurt and she immediately stops mm -hmm. like she's not like a she's not like Draco yeah. at all she's not at all like him in any way like she does care about people she even cares about Percy like she doesn't want Percy to die or anything like that Mm -hmm. She just feels threatened by him because of how her dad is.
Um, and she gets over that later on in this book. <laughs> so and that's it's a lot fine. more honest than Draco's like her, uh, Harry saves his life a couple of times and then he goes straight back to being evil. Like Hermes cabin is never looked under suspicion by yeah. anyone ever. No one ever looks at the kids in Hermes as if they are now dangerous and could be the villains or bad or untrustworthy either. Um, the only way that that really comes up is that in later books when kids start leaving camp to join Luke, like people are afraid that people in Hermes cabin will join him because that's their sibling and he knows how to, you know, manipulate them into like the joining. Cabin for yeah, and possible for every kid in every cabin could be like, you know, um, recruited by Luke. And that's like a whole thing that happens in the later books of that happening and not knowing like almost what to do about it. But nobody like, um, nobody like goes after the kids that way. Like they go after like Chiron, like we said, mm -hmm. that way, but he's an adult. There's nobody like purposely going after like literal children and being like, we don't trust you as a whole anymore because you're in Hermes cabin and Luke was in this cabin, this means that you're like suspicious or even that Hermes is suspicious. Nobody does that because they would be absurd. <laughs> like they're kids. They, they haven't done something wrong just because Luke happens to be related to them. And it's the same kind of thing of like the whole Slytherin weirdness of like, just because they're in Slytherin and Voldemort was in Slytherin doesn't mean everyone in Slytherin wants to be a Death Eater. Maybe you guys treating them so badly is the reason why they all become Death Eaters. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? No. <laughs> I know that J.K. Rowling has not thought about that for one second of her life. Oh my gosh, yeah. And like, her, Harry is such a like, very me-centric hero to the point where the emotional pull in Chamber of Secrets is, am I actually the heir of Slytherin? Is this somehow me and I don't know it? And then Prisoner of Azkaban, it's, oh, I'm uncovering things about my parents' death. Not that there's a potential serial killer out on the loose <laughs> like it's never harry's pull is never the right thing whereas mm -hmm. percy is kind of pulled in the direction that makes more sense that's like i want to protect this camp that has become my new home i want to protect these people even if they don't fucking care about me because they're my people 